Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining this C Engage event on our 2022 product roadmap launch. Um, just want to say as well, half the press, huge congratulations to Credit Unions for winning the CXI award for the seventh year running. Well done, I'm sure everybody's delighted. Um, just a quick reminder, we will be doing a Q&A session at the end, so you can unmute your microphone at the end of the session to ask a question to Ian or Claire, or you can pop your questions into the chat bar throughout the session and we'll come to these at the end. So I'm just going to pass over to Ian now to kick off the session. Thank you. Thanks very much, Rebecca, and uh, just extend my welcome to everyone to this session this morning. So look, we're really excited to be uh, spending the next sort of 45 minutes or so talking to you about our uh, product roadmap update um, and our launch of our new 2022 roadmap um, and uh, how we've kind of came about and built that. So just in terms of the kind of topics and agenda for this morning, We'll start by reflecting a little bit on 2021 in terms of what, uh, what has been worked on year to date and the activities that the teams plan to work on throughout the rest of the year. Um, then we'll move on to talk a little bit about uh, the activities running up to the 2022 roadmap. Claire's going to talk to you a little bit about product management and the product management function that we're building within Wellington IT. Uh, and then we'll get into the uh, results of the surveys that we've been carrying out and how that uh, manifests itself in our 2022 uh, roadmap. So we'll kick off by starting to do a little bit of a reflection on uh, 2021. So busy year uh, for all of us. Um, and uh, what we thought we'd do is reflect a little bit on some of the items and products that we've completed year to date. Um, so I'm not, not going to go through every single item on this list, but what you can see there is that there's a, a huge number of different uh, product areas that we've been focused on throughout the year. Uh, there's a couple items there uh, that have been highlighted in yellow. And the reason that we're just putting those on is really to call out that, look, as the year goes on, as you've probably heard me talk a little bit about before, we, we like to set out a 12 month roadmap. It's important for us and it's important for you guys to kind of show our direction of travel. Uh, but what we recognize is that as we go out uh, and sort of plan out and the year pans out, you know, things change throughout the year and therefore we always try and build in enough flexibility within our plans to enable us to pivot uh, as the year goes on. So really, if we just look at the and the reflection here, um, as, as we were kind of pulling this together, I think what, what pleased me was that there's a, there's a nice blend here of things between, uh, you know, new items that allow you to generate new revenue incomes like uh, flexible service member fees, uh, you know, and further enhancements to online lending, uh, revolving credit, mortgages, you know, so, so you know, a whole range of new activities that enable you to extend your portfolio of services. Uh, on top of that, then building in a whole series of efficiencies, whether that be around uh, our extending our decisioning service and automation, um, you know, a whole bunch of work around our loans inquiry hub in terms of how do you you know get get a handle on uh, all of the loans that are in flight, uh, and then a, a, a big focus on members uh, and how members can engage with you, and that's about enhancements to our online and mobile app, uh, and also recently just the launch of our new junior onboarding. So again, this is about helping you to reach out to the community. Uh, make it nice and easy for our junior members to join the credit union, but also ensure that they're kind of locked in for long term growth with you um, uh, as uh, as they grow up through their financial uh, careers. Um, so so lots and lots of stuff uh, delivered and great to see some new items in there. Uh, as we move uh, and we're now well into Q4, uh, really there's kind of two two big areas that we're working on. Uh, one, I've kind of provided here a list of what we're calling requirements discovery. And really this is areas where we're either doing some research and development or planning uh, because these are items that are uh, going to feed into the early part of 2022 uh, or the right items that actually we will actually start developing um, as, uh, as the, the quarter goes on. Uh, then there's a couple of specific items here at the bottom of the slide where where we are going to deliver. These are actually going to be deliverables in Q4 before uh, before the end of the year. Uh, so one of those is about login simplification. So one of the things that Claire and the team did earlier uh, this year was reach out and ask you guys for a specific questionnaire around the features and function and usability of the system. Uh, and what came back loud and clear from that exercise was that there was uh, some challenges for members getting access, whether that be logging in via the app or logging in via the uh, CEO Online Plus portal. Um, so we're making a number of changes to make that a little bit easier for people, specifically for the first time, yeah, uh, and changing how the process works for delivery of one-time passcodes. So that's a little bit around using push notifications 
applications. It's about changing the uh, the process so that if they get their username and password wrong, it doesn't take them to the next step. So a couple of little things that we're changing that make a significant difference, both in terms of making it easier, but also about creating a great first impression for the member. Uh, and then secondly, we continue to build out our decision services. We're working with lots of different partners uh, in terms of uh, people who want to provide value added decisioning services to uh, credit unions. So, so that's going to be our focus as we kind of close out the year. Um, so another very busy year. Uh, I just want to extend my thanks to, to everyone on this call and, and, uh, and to all of the team internally in Wellington in terms of delivering some of these great features. Um, OK. So I'll move on, Rebecca, to the next slide. So a couple of specific things I want to call out then, just in terms of real successes, I think, throughout the year. Um, and firstly, we want to talk about our real focus on the member here. So we've kind of branded this mobile and digital member onboarding. So uh, this is a, an area you're never done here, yeah, uh, you know, either in terms of features or functions or in terms of the user experience. Um, and uh, that's evident by the, the, the list of things that are on the slide in front of us. So, so we, these are things that we've introduced throughout the year. So push notifications, so this enables us to send messages, you to send messages to your member, whether that be ad hoc messages or automated messages. Um, these pop up on their phone, much like their emails do, um, and they're convenient and quick and easy ways to, to provide information to members. We're also then keen to capitalize. I mean, many of you have heard me talk about the credit union in your pocket, and really this is where we want to go with our app, which is we want to build the features and functions into the app so that when your member has the phone in the pocket, that really they're able to avail of as many services as possible in an easy and convenient way. Um, and one of those uh, is uh, now that we have biometrics in the app, we can allow members to sign their documents using biometrics. So from that point of view, it makes it nice and easy and convenient and actually much more secure. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit about how we want to kind of continue on that journey. We've also used the same process for login to the kiosk. So what this means is that rather than the member having to uh, you know, scan QR codes or get one time passcodes, they can then use their biometrics to automatically log into the kiosk. Yeah, uh, so again, it's about driving the use of the app as much as possible yes because basically it becomes a real portal for the member yeah and um, we've also worked on our idmv process we've worked with our partners in gbg to uh, introduce a new version of the idmv journey uh, this helps the member through assisting them through the liveness so it uh, advises them to you know if they're not looking directly at the screen it advises them to do that it gives them a little window in which they should be holding their face in so it really it's just about trying to make that nice and easy and kind of handhold the member as they go through that process. So again, this is all about improvements. Uh, um, uh, we then equally enhance the onboarding piece to provide additional internal notes, right? And this is really important because if you have lots and lots of uh, onboarding and we're seeing uh, great success across all our customers, is that if, uh, if there's a specific um, uh, application that you've reviewed and then you want to pass that back to the member for some further information, what it now enables you to do is create some notes against the application so that when you come back to it or when the member then provides you with further information back, you can then cross reference that against the internal notes. So this is just about driving further efficiencies uh, in the system. Uh, touched a little bit on junior onboarding. So really this is about uh, enabling you guys to take this product out to junior uh, members and potential members and out to schools uh, and how you can then really extend the scope of that, uh, yeah, get the compliance in place uh, and reuse the tools that are already available to kind of attract some of those younger members. Um, and then I've also talked about the simplification on the previous slide. So again, this is about how do we then uh, make sure that the tool becomes easy for everyone to use. Um, and, uh, and that's really all about the simplifying the login process um, for first time, uh, primarily on first time logins. OK, so that's all about digital. We've also been in tons and tons of enhancements in Scion, but I've pulled out really a couple here that I specifically want to talk about. Uh, one is around this enhanced loans inquiry screen. So one of the things that we've done is significantly enhanced the, the loans and inquiry screen to become a little bit more of a loans hub. So what this does is lets you go in, quickly find loans. So that can be lo a, an individual loan. It could be a loan that has a specific status. It could be assigned to an individual or a team, um, uh, or it could just be aging. Yeah. Um, uh, and what it does is it lets you get a, a single whole up view uh, of all of your loans in this kind of loans hub. But also, more importantly, it lets you take action on that. So whether that be uh, to contact the member, to move the status on, to issue a document, uh, all from one central hub. 
that then very quickly led us into the second point on here, which is all about loan status and workflow. Uh, so what we've done is we've extended the uh, capability to enable you to create various different loan stage statuses or stages, if you will. And um, so what this does is lets you think about the journey of a loan right from application through to completion. And if there are various stages within that, then you can create these within Scion. And then as it moves from one stage to the next, it can trigger a workflow. So that workflow could be to uh, assign a task to uh, a member of staff. It could be to create a document like a credit agreement and send it to the member, uh, or it could be as simple as just sending a push notification or a text message or an email to the member uh, or to a member of staff just to let them know that, uh, that the loan is moving on. So it's really all about keeping, keeping the members engaged on the process. Um, uh, as it moves uh, from one system or from one status to the next. Um, so we are uh, holding a specific session around uh, some of these key events. Uh, and again, uh, linked back to the questionnaire that we sent out earlier, this was a key uh, a key ask from from you guys, which is like, how, how, do, how do we manage our loan portfolio, you know, and all of the loan applications? Um, so we're going to run a specific event on this on the 10th of November. The invites will be going uh, out later this week. So keep an eye out for that. And I'm sort of strongly encourage everyone to come along and attend that because there's some really good features in there that can uh, really help you drive significant efficiencies for your organization. Okay, so uh, I'm going to hand over to Claire now to talk a little bit about the feedback process and how we ran into the planning process for 2022. Thank you, Ian. Um, firstly, good morning, everybody, and welcome. So before I kind of kick off and before I really begin is I want to I want to and I need to stress that we really value your involvement and engagement. And so far, we've been really successful in various platforms of engagement. So this is ranging from meeting with the executive user group to uh, meeting with individual credit unions. So there's been uh, various different levels of engagement. So I genuinely thank you all for your support and your involvement so far in the feedback process. When we work with the user group activity, we want to help solve problems. Rather than us just naming up technologies, naming up and providing you with solutions, we want to kind of work with you to help you on to help understand your issues and how best to solve them. So we want to do this with you, not just for you. Uh, you've probably received multiple receive uh, multiple um, surveys throughout the year, and our uh, survey tool of choice is SurveyMonkey. So as Ian mentioned before, we send out surveys throughout the year to kind of to gauge with you how are we doing, how are we getting on, how can we make things better. And this year we've had really good feedback uh, from yourself, so thank you. Today we've had a 70% completion success rate. So again, thank you for everybody who's taken the time out of their busy day to kind of provide us with um, ideas and how we can make things better for you and your members. In regards to the roadmap approach, I'm going to be soon uh, showing you our 2022 roadmap in a few minutes. But I wanted to bring your attention to the fact that we've taken it more of a targeted, more of a focused approach to the roadmap. And I've said it once and I'll say it again, and I'll probably bore you again and say it time and time again, but we're just we're more than just a roadmap. And what that means is that we are aware that times are changing alongside your priority. And as a result, we listen. And if we feel that there is an item which we feel you need or you want more than any of the items which are currently in the roadmap, we'll change it. We're completely agile and we're completely open to working with you to help make things better for you and your members. So we'll swap it out and we'll work on the item that will bring you and your members the most value. Um, if we just move on to the next slide. I'm going to have a quick chat about the, the function really of what is product management. So um, for those who haven't really heard about product management, one of the key functions is not really just to listen to what the customers want. It's more than that. It's more um, it's more because why do you want it? So you'll hear me, for those who have met me before, is you'll hear me ask, why do you want that? And I'm, I'm like the toddler in the car seat. Why do you want that? How is it going to add value? Why do you do it that way? How do you do it? Who does it? And quite often not, I would come back with answers just because. And I want to help challenge you on how you think about things, how you do things and help you kind of take a different approach from it as well. So that is the kind of the, the focus of product management as well. What helps me, if I understand the why, I can understand the need, and which is much more important than the want. So I can go back to the development team and go, this is the reason, this is the how, and this is the value that we're going to add. So within the product management team, just moving on to the next slide, um, again, the product management function is about taking ideas from a customer level. It's about creating a strategy and guiding the execution of a product to market. Its function is key and helps it helps me gauge what the change in needs of you, our customers are. And we have a lot of deep involvement with um, yourselves across the board as well. So our deep involvement and continuous engagement with you enables me and the team to provide timely feedback, 
changes and updates to the development team about both existing and new products. This leads to a reinforced continuous improvement cycle of our products with hopefully a result in increased customer satisfaction. When product management was kind of before it really got formed, I created a process which is called EAP. So this is exploration, analysis and plan. Sorry, Rebecca, can you move on to the next? That's it. Perfect. Thank you. So um, these are three key areas. So if we do each of these areas right, it helps us deliver a really good, successful product. So in the exploration phase, this is carried across the board. So this is carried out with our customers, the user group, and then it's brought back to the development team. And what we do is we explore the what, the how and the when. Once, we're, once we understand fully what the product, uh, the value is going to add, the requirements is, then we analyze. Once we have a good understanding of what the product purpose is, what the product, what, sorry, the, what the product requirements are and what the value add is, the senior developers will go away with this and analyze how best to bring this product to life. And then finally, we have the plan phase. So once we've explored, once we've analyzed and once we've understood, now it's time to plan. We plan capacity, we plan times, we plan execution and we plan the rollout of the product itself. And of course, that includes the communications as well. So by following this process, it allows us to fully understand product scope, Product requirements allows us to understand the, and mitigate the risks and product planning allows us to provide more, co more coherent timelines. One of the feedback, um, one of the, the kind of themes of the feedback came back from yourselves was surrounding the need for more documentation. So as a result, we're in the process of creating a centralised repository called Confluence. The development of this new tool is already underway and we hope to launch this tool early next year. We do genuinely understand the importance of documentation and having the right set of user guides. So we created a new role, which is called the technical author. And there's a name I'm sure you're all familiar with has stepped into this role. Fiona Cunningham has over 13 years experience within Wellington IT, ranging from support to CXM and now to her new, her new role. So you can be assured that the documentation will be customer focused, but more than that, they'll be accurate, precise and easy to follow. Confluence is also going to be used as a tool to store and promote all of the product documentation, demos, workshops, FAQs and much, much more. So watch this space um, the Confluence is going to be a tool that you will want to use and you're going to get very familiar with very, very soon. So I'll hand it back over to uh, Ian to walk through the, the, the roadmap reveal. Any there? Yeah, sorry, my network just dropped there a moment. So th thanks, Claire. Uh, so thanks for that. So what we're now going to do is move into uh, the exercise that we've undertaken in relation to the 2022 uh, product development roadmap. Uh, so to start with, I want to talk a little bit about the roadmap themes. So um, uh, as, as hopefully most of you are familiar, uh, we like when we build our roadmap, we like to categorize the products and services into a number of themes. So this is something we just back in 2018. Um, and really what the, the concept behind it, just for those of you that haven't heard me talk to this before, was really to give us an indication of like, well, why, why are we building these things and for what purpose? Uh, and secondly, making sure that we were having the right amount of focus uh, in the right areas. OK, and uh, what that means is that really what I'm looking for uh, is, is there a nice blend across the board here? So we're not only doing maintenance type activities, nor are we only just doing things that are driving efficiencies because we need to create scalability um, and long term growth uh, from strategic planning standpoint. Um, so we come up with these themes and every year we sit down and we review these themes to make sure they're still relevant. OK, uh, and I'll just, I'll just quickly touch on what they are. So first one's all about revenue generation. So are we building products and services that help you uh, uh, increase and improve your uh, revenue flows into the credit union? Uh, secondly, and becoming an increasingly more important area is around member experience. So whether this be in branch or online, uh, and, and again, some some of these things are a little bit interchangeable, uh, you know, in terms of because I, I want to talk a little bit about efficiency. Well, actually, the uh, the the bar is set pretty high here, yeah, you know, by some of your competitors in terms of how easy it is to do business uh, with the credit union. So again. Big, big focus for us is not only about making it efficient for the member, but also efficient for you guys from a staffing standpoint. So can we do more with less? You know, can we make the IT work harder? Uh, you know, some great examples of that around uh, decision automation and um, automatic payout of loans and so on. 
Uh, and then finally, in relation to maintenance and compliance, and this this covers a, a huge area of things. So we're going to talk a little bit about some compliance projects that are coming up next year in a few moments. But it's also about us maintaining the core platform to make sure that it moves with the times. You know, because what we don't want to do uh, is be uh, building on old technology that's kind of aging and it doesn't enable us to be flexible uh, and support you either either from a technology standpoint or from a risk and compliance standpoint as we move forward. So I guess. Uh, Really, the, the point I'm making here is that these themes uh, continue to be relevant. I think what we find as we move from year to year is maybe the importance of the products move a little bit, you know, left and right on this chart in terms of specific areas of focus. Uh, but we we uh, we think the themes are important and we use them certainly to hold ourselves to account in terms of our strategy planning session. Uh, so I thought it was just worth reflecting on that. Um, so if we just move to the next slide, Rebecca. So um, Claire mentioned earlier that one of the things we've done this year is put out a questionnaire and within that questionnaire we had identified through our previous engagement with both the user group exec and with a, a range of customers we'd identified a number of specific elements that uh, were important for our 2022 roadmap and what we asked each of you to do was vote on these, uh, so we basically give you the opportunity to vote, uh, and, and we did this based on priority because actually all the things made sense to certainly to us and to everyone that we were engaged with. But really, what we were looking for is well, if you have to kind of weight these for want of a better word, uh, how how would you do that? So we asked everyone to to vote them from a priority scale, uh, from one to one to six or one to seven. Uh, and what I've done here is we've analysed the data. So first. Thanks to everyone for, for that 70% response rate. It was fantastic and it really helps us shape our, uh, our activity and our roadmap. Uh, but what it does is it gives us a real indication of how we should prioritize which products, not only which products should we build, but in what order we should build them in. Okay. Um, so what I'm showing you here is the percentage of the votes that uh, recognized each of these elements as a priority one or two. Okay, so overwhelmingly, um, we got responses that all of the items made sense uh, and uh, were all logical and would certainly help uh, you guys both run and grow your business. Uh, but as you can see here, there's some specific standout areas. So one being around the ability to automatically uh, renew ID for members, uh, then, uh, then in the next sort of tranche between video banking, member communication, and engagement with the members and APIs in terms of integration with third parties. So when Claire talks in a few moments about how all of this manifested itself into the roadmap, uh, basically what we're doing is taking a key driver from your feedback to help us prioritize and shape that roadmap. Um, so the, the, the other thing that we asked for in that questionnaire was uh, a fairly open ended question say, well, look, are there other specific items that you'd like us to be uh, looking at as we build out the roadmap um, and what we've done here? So and again, thanks, uh, some some fantastic feedback and some great ideas in here. And um, so what I've done on this slide is just really pull out a few of those just to kind of give you some indication of where people's minds are at here. So some great suggestions. So biometric approval. So can you know, I touched on how we have already used biometrics in the app uh, for some areas so people are suggesting that could you use it for approval for transfers and other things all great ideas that make, make abundant sense and um, you know certainly a call for uh, further enhanced data analytics and I think this is important as you get you know your membership and your loan books grow how can you analyze that and you know so again this could be about reporting it could be about CU Insight and how, how we build those things out and you know uh, a quite a lot of feedback about member consent right and i think this is an important one in terms of being able to provide the member the ability to manage their own consents online and um, so that that makes sense certainly some conversations around chatbots and whether you know they and this could be um, enabling the members to self-serve. So Claire talked a little bit earlier about getting the best value from the system and having, you know, self-help and documentation. Well, actually, the, the next logical step there is actually, do you want to move towards a chat bottom? You know, and I've had various conversations with credit unions about you know, the, the the value that that would bring and whether it's really in keeping with the ethos. But it's really, for me, it's about looking at the technology that's available out there and how do we bring that to credit unions to help them. 
and and uh, and and a few suggestions around uh, artificial intelligence. And I think this is definitely an interesting area for us to look at. We've looked at biometrics. We've looked at uh, um, ID and V. You know, there's a there's a bunch of emerging technology here that's becoming uh, commoditized that uh, that we want to look at, and whether that be big data analytics um, um, and other emerging technologies around robotics um, and automation. You know, for things like password resets and so on. We're, we're keen to have a look at these and really what, what we'll do, so, so genuinely thank you for all this feedback, what we will do with this is as we build out our roadmap and we're going to be talking about how we've prioritised it, uh, we are now digging into some of these things. We'll probably reach out to some of the people uh, who have raised these to, to try and just get to Claire's point earlier, just get underneath what's driving these, but there's some fantastic ideas on here. Uh, and what we do within our roadmap, by the way, is we create uh, we create some capacity to enable us to, to pick up on other things, right? So just take the, the, the bottom two on this list sign enhancements and loan enhancements so there's a continual evolution of how do we make our products better and easier to use uh, i know there was some interesting uh, and really useful comments in here about you know uh, ensuring that all the data that's supplied online is properly mapped through and driving efficiencies and so on so so there are some quite technical things uh, and we will absolutely uh, update and review and act on all of those but this is fantastic feedback because basically our our approach is to try and set out a direction of travel get you guys to help us sanity check that it's the right direction of travel and prioritize it. Uh, but what this list is doing is not, it's giving us an insight into to, to some other items that we should perhaps be looking at either this year or planning for future years to come. So genuinely, thanks for that. So um, if you just flick on Rebecca. So I'll hand over you, Claire, now, and you can talk uh, talk through the uh, current 2022 roadmap. Thanks. So the way I'm going to take the approach for show, walking you through the roadmap is I'm going to go through each category. So we'll start with uh, maintenance and compliance. So as Ian mentioned before, we have the pay stats and fraud uh, stats report, and we also have the IBAN account register. Now these aren't really due until next year, but we are doing our research and development to make sure that we are ready to allow you to be ready for next year as well. So for those who aren't aware, and I'm sure you are all very much aware of each of these, is the pay stats and fraud stats report. It's a mandatory regularly, I can't say that word, a mandatory regulatory change and it's enforced by the Central Bank of Ireland as well. So this will see the merging of the pay stats and fraud reports as well. So um, our DPO, Ben Roy, is currently working on this and he's working closely with uh, your, some of the, the credit unions yourself as well as some of the other compliance departments as well. The account, uh, the IBAN account register, Again, another mandatory regulatory requirement from the, the central bank, and this project will create the standardization and registration of IBANs uh, across the board. So if we move on down to member experience. Actually, let me before I jump to member experience, we'll keep on maintenance and compliance. So we I put SEP in here and I've put a few asterisks in. And the reason why I put this in is we are aware of instant readiness. We know that it's coming. So we are, we're doing our research and development uh, and we are basically waiting for the business requirements to be kind of cascaded into us. So once we know more, we're going to be ready to start development as and when the business requirements come in through too. Moving down to member experience, we have the first um, area we were thinking of was enhanced member self-serve. I think this is a massively popular one amongst all credit unions and what we are trying to create here is uh, accounts so uh, the creation of accounts to be able to apply for products and services so for example um some of the high street banks offer the ability to save and for have saving goals wallet budgets we, we want to do the same thing we want to put the power back in your members hands so they can kind of create their own saving goals as well so moving on down, we have the digital loan status. So it makes sense. You can go into Scion and you can see where the loan is. So we're now bringing that to the front end so the member can see, OK, where's my loan? What status is it at? Rather than pick up the phone all the time and calling you and asking you these questions, they'll have like a little portal where they can kind of see a little process or a flag where you can update in the back end. It'll go through the front end and the member will say, oh, OK, it's waiting for approval or it's ready to be paid out as well. So it's kind of creating that seamless transaction for your um, for your members. Um, moving down to revenue generation, we have um, Open Bank Spend Analytics. So Open Bank is a hot, it's a hot topic, and it's one of these things. It's a, it's continuous improvement and it's ever evolving. So we feel that the Spend Analytics will allow your members to easily understand their own money. But at the same time, on the other side of the coin, this will provide the further information to allow you, the credit unions, to make a more informed loan decision. Um, moving on down again, I'm just sticking to the first half of the products here too. So we have the documentation and self-help portal. I have mentioned this before, 
but I do believe that the confidence will be your tool of choice to go. There's quite often maybe you, there's FAQs and maybe your phone and support and go, oh, what's that answer? Whereas if you had the documentation there, a lot of you, uh, all our all our credit unions are very self-sufficient and you know the answers. Maybe it's just a little bit of FAQ if you had the documentation there, you can answer yourself. So hopefully we can kind of work with you to extract the best way to, can provo um, to provide this kind of documentation as well. So the big one, as you see, it was 70% of the uptake was the IDNV renewal. Now, what I've done here is I've broken it up to two phases because you'll all agree there's two types of members. We have the member who is digitally comfortable slash confident and then those who aren't quite so. So the first phase are, is going to kind of tackle those who are digitally comfortable so they can log in to see online. They'll get a pop up, they'll click a link and then they can go through the IDNV process and thereby renew their, um, their ID. Moving across here, we have the enhanced member communication. Who is it? Oh, sorry. So the enhanced memory communication portal is a way that we want to provide the ability to allow you to capture. Yeah, okay. um, sorry, if you're not talking, can you go on mute, please? Sorry. <laughs> um, the communication portal will allow you to capture a variety of member information via online and mobile. We're going to try and build out the current messaging platform and capture member consent. So what I would like to do is I want to work with a lot of your, yourselves and how best do we do this for you? What's the most quickest, efficient way to do this too? And then we have our current onboarding um, experience. So it's for existing member recognition is how do you, so what I have found um, is that a few of you have come back to me and said that there could be duplication of registration so that maybe they haven't, maybe they are, they haven't logged on in a while or maybe they're not getting picked up as well. So we want to create the functionality to allow all CU staff to see if an existing member is trying to register to become a new member. And uh, we want to kind of work to circumvent that and reduce duplicity there really. Moving across to the second half of the year, uh, we have the language converter. Now, this is one I think Ian I got quite excited about. So we met with the executive group about this. Um, basically what this is, it's a little tool or a library whereby the member can go and actually change the, la the language in which they speak to. So if it's Irish or Polish, we're going to work to see if we can build this into our, our digital platform. And we think it will help not only ourselves, but also the member and really enhance the member experience as well. Uh, another hot topic that Ian and I are both very excited about is video banking and video banking, I think it lend itself to so much opportunity in regards to enhanced member experience and also enhancing the loan books as well. So we want to allow for more interactive member experience with the member and their credit union. We want to try and create a help function or button to link members to their credit union. It's the creation of a seamless interaction between member and CU staff by allowing screen share video, video connectivity and so much more. So again, I'm going to be reaching out and asking for help with this one too to understand how best we can serve this for you. So moving down, we have the API module build out. So you can see here anything with asterisks is we want more involvement with yourself as well. So we this is really the creation of a suite of APIs to help provide the ability to allow credit unions to plug into third parties. Uh, for example, credit unions to allow to build a better communications module, market and service, etc. So this is an area we know that you want. We're going to work with you to make sure that we can deliver exactly what you want. Scanlon's another one that has asterisks around it because this kept popping up again and again through the feedback, but we need more constructive. So how do we help deliver you an end-to-end -end scan and solution? So it could be the integration GLI software to store and index documents, or it could be a lot more. So this is uh, this is an area we know it is it is of interest to yourself. So I will be reaching out to work um, with you if you let me. <laughs> and moving down, we have uh, the IDNV renewal phase two. So this is the other side of uh, what I was mentioning in phase one and phase two. So this is we want to create a portal whereby those mem members who maybe aren't as digitally comfortable or confident, you can push out a link via Scion and email. They can click on the link and they'll have a secure portal where they can upload their documents or they can do the face recognition as well. So this one's a little bit harder to uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, it needs more security elements around it for us to make sure we're doing it correctly. So again, I'm going to be working with yourselves to see how best should we give this to your non-digitally comfortable pe your members as well. And the last one is virtual member book. So this actually this is another idea that came from the uh, the executive group whereby the, the member has a pass a pass or a paper passbook and they go in and they identify themselves and they, they provide the verification. So a virtual member book is whereby you have a QR code that can sit in the app and they scan it in and it'll basically automatically recognize them. So it kind of enhances the member experience, reduces paperwork and reduces an, an awful lot of man, a manual interaction as well. So that is again at first glance the 2022 roadmap. As Ian and I both said, Everything is subject to change. It's not set in stone. If there's another item you think we're agile, we will work with you to make sure that we're giving you what you want and versus what you need as well. So what happens next? So Rebecca, if you can move on to the next slide, please. 
So um, as you know, we um, are sending lots of communications every quarter and each quarter has an update on what we've done, what we're doing and what's coming next. So in Q4, there will be a communication in regards to the compliance projects, which I've just mentioned as well. The Q4 comms will also include what we've done, what we're doing and again, what's coming next as well. So what I would like to do is kick, take this opportunity to ask anybody, if there's any items on the, on the roadmap, reach out, talk to me. Let me work with you to make sure that we are building the products for what you want, because sometimes we can get a little bit lost in translation and we think this is what you want. But if you tell us what you want and how to do it, we'll work with you. So I'm really, really, I really want to engage with you. So help me help you, so to speak. And also, again, just following up that I want to set up a product fo um, focus group in particular for the video banking and member commerce portal. And the reason I've, I've kind of called these two out is we feel at Wellington that these can generate revenue, they can increase efficiencies and really drive kind of member communications as well. So again, if you're interested in working with me, just drop me a line. My email is just there. Um, and again, I've mentioned before, but the regular product communications will be out each quarter. And in the updates, we will always um, send communications before uh, and as when we can. And I'm going to say it one more time, just in case it hasn't hit home, we're more than just a roadmap. So things will move around in accordance to your priorities. Um, if there's an item that's not in the roadmap, raise your hand, tell us. And we're here to listen, really. And that's us, yeah. Thanks for that, Claire and Ian. Um, that was really interesting and I hope everybody found it useful and informative. Um, there's no questions in the chat bar at the minute, but if anyone wants to pop any questions in about any of that, or if you want to unmute your microphone and ask Ian or Claire, please feel free to do so. Just as uh, we're waiting for those questions to come in, um, just in terms, I shared a slide a little bit earlier where there was, you know, the open questions in terms of the feedback. So Claire and I are reviewing that. We totally anticipate actually some of the items. There are some fantastic ideas in there that they will land in the roadmap. So obviously those that feedback has just come back. So, uh, so as Claire said, we will continue to update this. Uh, I think from my point of view, we've got quite a nice um, blend uh, in the roadmap there of, you know, some real technical things like scanning that we just didn't ask you to vote on because we just know that just needs fixed and we're, and we're going to do something about it right through to you know the id renewal and the uh, you, you know the um, apis and so on and video banking so uh, yeah it's good good to see that so thanks ian um we have a question from siobhan will we be able to white label the comms to members um i i guess siobhan i'm, I'm keen to understand what you mean by that you know i mean it basically comes but the comms to members you're in control of yeah and what we're keen to do really is give you flexibility right so uh, so in terms of communications to member that that can be anything from a text message to now a push message in the app through to uh, an email yeah um, and therefore yeah basically yeah the system uses communication codes that enable you to kind of uh, you know tailor that yeah um, and uh, we have uh, we have a new html sort of formatted email function so say say you want to actually use your own branding for example on emails that make it look look like more of a, either a marketing email or a more official email then we can we can work with you on that if, if that's what you're getting at Siobhan yeah. Okay, Siobhan, hopefully that answers your question, but if you need any more clarity, just pop a message in. Yeah. Um, Brendan asks, the option to add a note to member onboarding, could this be extended to see online plus registrations, as these can often be dealt with by different staff over a number of days? Okay, so you're you're saying, Brendan, that if, uh, if, if someone is uh, applying, they're an existing member and they're registered for online banking, that maybe that moves from one staff member to another. Yeah, we could absolutely add, add the same feature in there, yeah, to enable you to come back and pick that up. So yeah, I'll reach out to you, Brendan, actually, and have a look at that use case. But yeah, yeah absolutely. Anything that makes this more efficient, basically, where and certainly where there's volume. You know, one of the reasons we put this into onboarding was we saw an increase in volume, you know, uh, and obviously uh, a big focus, actually, for us is on this very area Brandon which is that we as we look across because we can look across our entire uh, customer portfolio we see that actually we have we still although it's increased significantly over the last 12 to 18 months there's still a huge number of members who don't uh, who don't avail of the digital services and that's partly why we're looking at how do we simplify it both for the member but to your point Brandon how do we make it easy for you guys too yeah. thanks Ian um I'll just give it another 15 seconds or so if anyone wants to pop any more questions. Oh, there's a question here, sorry, from Simon. 
Is there a continual look at the process flows within the C-Online Plus and online onboarding from the member user experience? For example, loan application where the member is retired still requires an employer name. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's there's definitely a piece of work there. We are we are looking at uh, we're actually looking at lo uh, loan product selections uh, at the moment, Simon, and I think this plays into this a little bit. So, in other words, that it's partly about look, can we drive a set of behaviours for you know, for example, a, a new a new member? Do you want to offer them a first time loan type thing? You know, equally, which is sort of the converse, Simon, of your example, which is you know, if there's something you specifically know about that member, how do we drive the right set of behaviours up front? Yeah, so uh, I think um, yeah, we we have we have some features online that that kind of manage that based on uh, term of loan, value of loan. We're now looking at uh, options around covered loans and first time borrowers. Um, but I think yeah, that's a great example as well. Um, you, you know, in terms of driving that behaviour, and it's something actually we've we've been looking at Simon in terms of when we turn on the open banking functionality as well. We, you know, that says like if you're going to send the member down an open banking journey. What additional data do you then require from them? You know, in terms of almost like a, a matrix of profiling members. So, thanks for that, Ian. Um, Tom says great to see lots of new development ideas and uh, dimension about the core system as well. Which Tom, there was a slide at the very start you might have missed it, focused on some enhancements around Scion, and there is going to be a session on the tenth of November with some invites sent out to show what we've worked on so far. So you'll see that in the recording that I'll send out after this. Yeah, and look, there, there is more to come there, you know, because actually what we what we are doing is we're we're looking at where we can drive out more efficiencies uh, there, uh, Tom. You know, and that, like, you know, pop scanning is a good example of that. We know there are other specific areas with uh, documents and document categorization. You know, partly when they come in from the web and naming conventions and stuff like that. So, so there are certainly some things that we're looking at uh, as well that that are very deeply linked to the core system. Um, from from. Um, Simon asks, following Brendan's question, can the online message operate like the tasks whereby a staff member can accept the message and progress? Oh, yeah. So uh, you're thinking, Simon, yeah, where uh, uh, the member sends a message in, can it create a task basically for someone to pick up? I think that's a great idea. So Claire, maybe if you could make a note of that, we can pick that up with the team. But yeah, I think that's a really good point because it's about driving a, a standard set of behaviours, Simon, isn't it? You know, in terms of how those are picked up. So yeah, I mean, it, effectively creating a message creates a, an access type. If we can create an access type in Scion, well, then we can create, we can effectively do it as a trigger point. So we could create a task from that. So that might, that might actually be possible via a Big Simon, I'll have a look at it. It's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, if you decide to just cut any edges at no, the no. moment, when message, online messages come through, and as we're as we're getting a, an awful lot more online messages, yeah. I come in in the morning and still have ten messages up here, and I don't know has it been dealt with. I don't know has another staffer picked that up, and there can be often duplication of work. It can be duplication yeah. communication back to the member. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, that makes makes perfect sense, Simon. It's a great idea. Yeah, no, totally understand. So yeah, we'll we'll absolutely look at that. Yeah, because I think actually we're 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 putting a lot more focus on tasks, Simon. Yeah, and therefore this is probably about aggregating it and, and flowing everything through the same process. So yeah, I really like that idea. Yeah. Thanks, Ian. Um Siobhan asks, can we have a bank of how-to videos for members, especially around push notifications for use on our website and socials? So Siobhan, as um, Claire mentioned earlier, we'll be launching uh, a new knowledge base on Confluence next year. And there'll be some videos and things like that in there that you're more than welcome to use. You might want to rebrand to your to your own credit union. Anything we do will be Wellington sort of have that look and feel about it. But we do have a couple of little videos I'll send to you um, after this around showing them how to log in and things on our YouTube channel. So I'll share that with you. Um, and then we have a question. Thank you for sharing the roadmap. Has the roadmap been through been through the explore? Oh, there's a few questions coming in. Sorry. Has the roadmap been through the explore analyze plan steps described earlier? Uh, I can take this one. So no, the way we do this is um, the feed. The roadmap is has just been created. Um, we've just got new feedback on. So what we do is per product, we do the EIP process. So we take each item on the roadmap and then we carry that process per product. Um, I think we did the EIP process for the overall roadmap. We never get past the explore stage because there's so many amazing ideas that we want to do and you keep coming to us too. So no would be the answer, but yes is the granular answer to each item on the roadmap. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Yeah. Um. Okay, thanks guys. Um Michael says, 
We are all in the same business, serving our members and essentially all doing the same use case flows. Can I please ask that you look for consistent workflow as we move to a truly digital platform? It would be a huge missed opportunity if we didn't pull knowledge and best practice in this transformational change journey. Yeah, and I, Mike, I'll, something we spoke about before, I uh, 100% agree. Uh, and actually, one of the things that we're doing uh, to solve for this, by the way, is that we are uh, we're going to recruit a new trainer into our team and we're actually going to uh, line that trainer up with our, our help desk, right? Because what we're then doing is identifying where either where customers are struggling or also identifying best practice, right? And then we, uh, in terms of how we then deliver that best practice, we'll do it through a series of things. Uh, it could be training, it could be self-help videos, it could be documentation. Uh, but yeah, I think I think you're right, Michael. I think, uh, I think there are some intricacies maybe as you move from one credit union to the next, but Actually, you're absolutely right. At, at the core, uh, everyone wants to do the same thing, and there are lots of great features and functions in the system. And you know, even just to Simon's point earlier about tasks and so on. Uh, so yeah, we we totally agree. And actually, you know, just to reiterate, so part of how we're going to solve for this is we're going to hire someone from a training standpoint, yeah, and therefore from that point of view, Michael, then they will be engaging with you guys, and they will then inherently tease out best practice, and then we will use that to then share that back best practice across uh, across the uh, entire customer base. Thank you. Um, Tencent says thanks for the presentation and um, will there be CE Online Plus analysis, MPCAS accounts analysis on CE Insight in the near future? Yeah, we, we're working on that. So we've actually appointed someone now in a role of data analyst uh, and actually internally Tencent and, uh, and actually that role was uh, partly about data work in terms of loading data and analyzing data and, and manipulating data, but actually we've also given that specific role ownership for our um, uh, CU Insight uh, data analytics tool, okay? Uh, and one of the things that we're absolutely looking at is the online analytics. So there are there is some of this data that you guys can't get to very easily because it's part of our shared services, but we totally understand why you're asking the question, Tinson. So yeah, we're, we're working on that at the moment, which is how do, how do we make that data available for you? Yeah, so yeah, that's that's coming. Uh, there, there is some updates already on, on MCAS accounts, um, so we can pick up perhaps on that separate, but certainly in terms of the online analytics, in terms of, you know, number of logins and attempt the logins and throughput and so on that we we have that data and we're keen to share that with you yeah so that that's coming soon okay that's great and thank you uh philip ask any update on push notifications on unbranded apps so no we're, we're we're kind of working working with it it's uh we're having some challenges with uh get, getting the updates into that uh that on branded version of the uh, of the app uh, philip so we'll have to pick that one up with you independently okay um unless anyone wants to unmute quickly and ask any questions I think mm -hmm. we'll oh I'm I'm seeing lots of lovely emails coming in, so thank you for those who've actually put their hands up and voluntarily part of the user group. So thank you. So well, thank you. Thank you. Keep, keep going. <laughs> yes, just just bombard Claire with emails. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you want to get involved, that would be great. Um okay, we'll leave it there then. Thanks everyone for joining. I hope you found it useful and informative. And uh we'll send out a recording of this session along with the link to the roadmap that you can go in and, and click on the stuff and learn more about them. Um it is always subject to change, but that link will be in the email as well. So thanks everyone and thanks Claire and Ian. No problem. Thanks everyone for attending. Okay, take care. Thank you. Thanks, Jillian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.